to the second set, the second phase of projects. This is around automation. So people get excited by this. And they've heard about double R, double R, and all these cool things. So these are the, the projects that are essentially going to allow you to leverage you and get thousands of times the lead you're probably getting now. And there are two types of automation. One are campaign automation. Um, I know for a fact we're the only people in recruitment uh, with, with this one strategy, double R, double R. Why? Because I created it. Um, there's also nurturing strategies and all these other cool things. The fact is this. If you look at your marketplace now, 90% of your, of your clients are not hiring now. 10% are. So you want to use automation to shake the tree to get those 10% to come to you. The 90% we want to automate nurturing them. So in the next year when they are hiring, we're in front of them and we're nurturing them. We call that nurturing maximizer. So there's two types of automation we want to really focus on. One is campaign. I need clients and candidates now. And one is nurturing. Now, the reason why most people, you might be on the call now, is you're exchanging your time for money. You're working hard, but guess what? The money's not going up. So you've probably got some of this happening. You might have to recognize this. Number one, you might have manual processes. So you're doing the things I referenced earlier, the three things to get clients. Number two, you might not nurture relationships. You might not nurture relationships. So with our campaigns, double R, double R, about 40% of the inbound leads coming in on message four. Most people try and contact the client once. Whatever you do, I'm not sure what you do. It's a one-hit wonder, isn't it? But the relationship's not nurtured. And number three, they treat all prospects the same. So they look at their, their list of 100 people, bam, 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 bam. They're not all the same. Only 10% are hiring. What sort of fool or foolish mindset would it be to go for 100 people and treat them all the same? No, in this time of digital, why not see of those 100, which 10 are actually hiring or thinking about hiring and then have them come to you? So you don't treat them all the same. Key distinction, guys. Key distinction. So the projects we want to have implement, implemented, number one, we want to install client and candidate campaign automation. That means the 10% who are hiring now or are thinking about hiring. Number two, nurturing. So 90% are not going to be hiring or indeed may not be thinking about moving. Number three, with project six, brother. We want to install one-to-many strategies on LinkedIn and whatever social platforms you use. So you guys probably all know Brant Hadley by now. He's a bit of a, bit of a legend. Brant came to us. He's done about 250, 300. In his first year with us, he just missed a million. Um, this year, he's pushing towards two to three. Um, plus, he's setting up a whole new business, a whole new office um, in London. He's based in the States, but he's got his life back. He's probably working about 20% um, of what he was doing in terms of hours, and he's not away at all now. On LinkedIn, uh, beginning when he joined us, he had about 1,400, 1,500 um, connections on LinkedIn. Uh, end of year one, he had 15,000. Didn't do any of it. Didn't go to one meeting to sign a, to try and close a deal. He only went to a meeting to close to sign a, a pre-agreed contract. He deals with a very high high-end marketplace, CEOs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, in the states, middle market. Point I'm making to you: whatever you're doing, 80% of what you're doing right now can be systemized, aut automated right away. So. I want you to bring up this sheet. I want you to bring up this sheet. And this is the bit people often get excited about, the automation piece. And it is really exciting. Don't get me wrong. I want you to bring up this sheet. Just put it inside the chat box. Let me know when you've got the sheet. Just put um, automation. Hell yeah. Um, Steve, I think my audio is okay. Guys, let me know if my audio is okay. Can everyone hear me okay? Let me just reset it one second. See, that's any better, Steve? Everyone else is pretty cool, I think. Steve, maybe um, try from your side. Cool. So, this is into automation now. So, there are, again, I'm going to zip through this because we respectful of time. So project four, project four, we want to install automation for the 10%. That means the 10% of clients who are looking to hire or indeed maybe the 10 to 50% of candidates who'd be open to moving. Okay. We want to install, so we call it campaign automation. Now, if you don't have this, what you do is you treat everyone the same, but what you're doing is you've got a manual process. 
So what that means is, again, is the up and down months. The up and down months. Now, if you do have this, though, if you've got this automation in place and you've gone through the first project, remember the very first project I said, project one, about building a data set. If you do have it, you're fish in a barrel. So if you've got a database, say, of 50,000 clients, and it breaks down into, keep it nice and simple, five lots of 10,000, client type A, B, C, D, E, you need, oh, we need more clients, Jane. You run double R, double R, and then you're getting a 50% reply rate. The highest we've got, as you see out there, is 94%. The average is between 20 and 70. But you've got the 50% reply rate, of the, which um, a third is A's, third is B's, third is C's. It's fish in a barrel. But remember project one, you get the data set in place. So there's a flow to what we do. Believe it or not, we know what we're doing. So if you've got that data set in place and you've got the automation, it's fish in a barrel. Now next, project five. Project five, the 90%. So we focus on clients. 90% are not going to be hiring now. So we need to nurture them. We're also going to nurture the other candidates as well, the 50% plus of candidates. So in the next 12 months, chances are that your clients may well be looking to hire, agreed? So 10% are hiring now, the 90%, we don't want to leave them. So we want to nurture them, so we automate that process and nurturing them. Now remember, again, step one, we've now got a data set, we've got the marketplace covered off. If you don't have this, you've got no follow-up. You've got no, you zero relationship. And you, do you know what you are? You're a second-hand car salesman. You go in and speak to them when you need something. Next, and you're, and you're going to be selling. You're going to be getting the objections because we haven't got project three, the client attainment system. If you do have this in place, what you've got is an automated sales machine. Because you're front of mind once, twice, three times a week with four different types of contacts. I won't go through now, we called the Nurture Maximizer. It's not just sent, correct, send a crappy article, there's actually a process to it. But what you've got is an automated sales machine for the next year plus. So when they're ready, who are they going to speak to? You be in front of them three times a week, or how, however many times you want to be. Now, project six. It's where you want to leverage one to, one to many, but on LinkedIn or whatever platforms you use. So, um, Marcus, I know you're in Germany, so you'll, you'll be using Zing. Some of you be on all different platforms. Brand I mentioned, so it went from 1,000 and a half to 14, 15,000 connections in one year. Tripled his business, just missed a million in the first year. Didn't do one of those on LinkedIn. Jamie Clark, I mentioned, he sat there, launched a campaign from our, our event in London, April the 19th, and within two hours, he's got two vacancies. How? How? Because we've got a process in place that allows us to scale it without us being the point of success and us being the point of failure. Now, if you don't have this in place, what you've got is you. You doing it, and you've got basically a point of failure going on. If you don't do it, it's not going to happen. Now, if you have got these processes in place, what you start to get is the opportunity to scale. In a simple version like LinkedIn, you need a proven um, template, well, proven templates, proven funnel, proven metrics. Then also you need someone to, someone or something to run it, depending on whatever platform you're using. So the summary is this, guys. When we automate, and I'm sure there's someone here, a competitor, listen to me now, and I'll hunt you down. 10% of your marketplace in the client side would be available now. Look in now. 90% are going to be in the future. You want to automate all of that. It's not your job to manually contact these people to find out. It's your job to get them coming into your inbox. And if you get this done right, 80% of what you're doing now, your time, can be getting off your plate right away. So in terms of projects, project four, what are we doing here? We're automating the process to get inbound client and candidate leads. We're automating the process. So they're coming into our inbox, whether it's clients or candidates. So you need to think strategically. So if, they, if you're in a big marketplace, you wouldn't go out and contact or have an inbound approach for client type A's and then an inbound approach for candidate type C's, would you? Because the two don't match up. We plan out your month ahead and say, right, we're going to go for client type A's and candidate type A's. That would be our campaign. So when the client says, yeah, I need candidates with red hair, guess what? You've got a campaign for candidates with red hair. It's thinking strategically. And this is where businesses go from doing 100K to 500K really, really quickly because we think about planning the next month and 90 days ahead so the two match up as opposed to dropping everything. In terms of the nurturing, we really want to focus on the 90%, which are not ready now. 
And there are four forces to do that. We've got, we've got the attention, we've got engagement, we've got called triple T, and we've got authority, which is a whole other set. But you want this automation here set up for the next 12 to 18 months. So you don't have to do it. You're in front of these guys for the next 12 to 18 months, one hit, done. In project six. Really, really important that we get this. Your job is a business owner. And whatever, if you're one of those guys sat on LinkedIn on your phone on the, on the sofa and your wife looks at you or indeed your spouse and they give you that dirty look, yeah. We don't want that. You're a business owner. So all of your social platforms and what process you use to source candidates or indeed lead generation online, you shouldn't be doing this and you don't need to. So the automation is a game changer. It's a game changer both for campaigns, the 10% and 90% that we nurture. So let's do this. Capital Q, questions in the chat box, and please put phase two for your questions, okay? Phase two for your questions. I'm gonna power through again, be respectful of time. So, phase three. Phase three. These are the projects to ensure that you, I hate using the phrase, it's being bastardized, and excuse my French, I don't mean that in an expletive manner, I mean it in a term of frustration. It's being bastardized by people who um, talk about working on the business and in fact they're working 20 hours a day and they're not running the business in the manner that they, 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 they profess to or indeed guide you to. So you've probably read the book, if you haven't, I recommend you read it, called Built to Sell. If you want a business that runs without you. So essentially we're doing the, recruit, the Built to Sell for recruitment here, okay? It's about you working on the business, not in the business. So there's three things that I see and three reasons that really, really jump out at me when I speak to recruitment business owners. The first is this, the model you're using is a model that's been, was fully outdated, even if it's probably three years, two years, if you, in lead generation, candidate generation, it's probably out of date. But the whole conceptual model of your business is outdated. Number two, you're doing everything yourself. You're doing everything yourself. So you're doing the accounts, you're doing the candidate sourcing, you're doing the client side. You know, I normally speak to, when I do speak to someone, they get through to me um, after they've gone through our filtering process. I often feel tired listening to what people do. It's like, wow. If you just direct that energy. And number three, the business isn't run as a business. It's run as a job. And it's, um, you know, I've been through this. I've been through every pain you can imagine. I've lost everything. It isn't to be able a calm, a, 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 a sub story. It's, uh, I've been through everything that you've probably been through or going through, but I've also gone through the other side of this now. So I know what it takes to get to quarter meal, to half meal, move up to meal, and et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? The biggest, the big, the, the, the for our members, going from zero to or start up into the half a million is great if you can follow a paint by numbers. Half a mil to a mil is the toughest bit. A mil onwards, again, is easy compared to that half a mil to a mil. That's where the jump is. But the startup will stroke the lower numbers to half a mil. That's easy. It's laid out. It comes down to implementation at a big level. So the outcomes we want is this. Number one, project seven. We want to install one to many recruitment. So that means not you. It means about a change of role for you. Number two. We want to leverage virtual talent. Oh, Andy, I've used the virtual team, everything went wrong. Yep, and do you know what? You were the problem. I know that because I went through over 50 VAs in one year once. I've been using virtual teams now for over 10 years. But now we've got members who have got seven figures, and there's them, and there's three VAs, and they're doing a million dollars. I'm not talking about creating a team of 50 people. And the biggest constraint or the biggest mind block I often get is, what's your outcome? Well, Andy, I want to get, um, a, I want to get an office and have 10 consultants. Okay, why? Well, that's what I've always been taught. Get 10 consultants, you know, get one for each desk. Okay, why? Where's the inbound happening? Where's the, um, where's the authority happening? Where, where's the, the flow happening? Where's, it doesn't make any sense. We've just been conditioned. Project nine, we want to install 30 day and 90 day sprints, milestones and metrics. Andy, we do that anyway. Uh, you probably don't, you probably don't. And you don't do it religiously. There's no, there's no coincidence that the guys that have gone from doing say 100K to 500K and the 500K to a mil, and onwards are the guys who take this seriously. So we plan out our 90 day sprints into 30, 60, 90 days we can come to shortly, but we need to get this grip on metrics, key thing. So phase three, phase three. This is about you now being a business owner, about being a business owner. So we just bring up this worksheet. We just bring up this worksheet. Let me know when you got it. So give me a hell yeah in the chat box, phase three.
Loving some of the comments, by the way, but um, we'll get to the questions at the end, okay? So I just want to make sure we power through this. So, thanks, Mark. Cool, Chad. Cool, Tom. Cool, Chad. I think Tom is the most popular name on here today, by the looks of it. Anyhow, so we're now talking about acceleration. So this is the bit where I get most excited, get most excited, because this is where the, the true scale starts to happen. So we've got three key projects happening. We've got project seven. So what we're looking to do here is really get focused on a one-to-many model. A one-to-many model. This is the key thing, and it comes down to the infrastructure of your business and the systems in your business. So when I used to work in the corporate world, we used to call the phrase fall under a bus. So, so if you're one of your, mem your team members falls under a bus, um, can someone come in and run with it completely novice? So say my, my role with B-Sky B, I had a team of 75 people, biggest CRM implementation in Europe, going back about 2004, five-ish. Um, and that would be one of the phrases we, we, we'd use over and over again, fall under a bus, fall under, under a bus. And so it's about having systemization in place. Now, if you don't have this in place, what you've got is basically a job. I can guarantee you what you've also got is stress and what you've also got is low growth. You've got low growth. So a new member comes in, or indeed, if you've got a VA and they're running your automation, is the process systemized? So we've got a whole onboarding process to build a seven-figure team for a virtual team, but that needs to happen. If it hasn't, you've got a job, you've got stress, and you've got low growth. I know that because I've seen it every single time. Now, if you have got this in place, what we've got is a, is a process whereby you focus on conversion. So if someone else is running the systems for you, so for example, double R, double R, if we put 1,000 leads in, we get 10% conversion. That means we've got 100 leads converting, yes? If we could tweak that and we could then get tweak up to 20%, we've doubled it by tweaking a few elements, literally a few words. Now it's 20%. So all we've done is spent a little bit of time tweaking. But without that virtual team or the virtual person, the conversion won't happen because in the real world, you're going to start fighting fires. So we need this conversion happening. And the second step is, when we get a process converting, then we can scale it and we can replicate it. So you may, you know, I mentioned Keith earlier. You know, Keith uh, shut down his office in Covent Garden. He's now got six remote um, commission-only recruiters. Had his best month ever from Vietnam. You're going to meet him shortly. Uh, that didn't happen straight away. But he got the whole process of, yep, yeah, I can't be doing this. I need to have a process to run without me. Now, project eight. Project eight. What we need to really get focused on here is deciding role. Decide role. What's your role in the business? Next, we need to focus on the friction first. So what does that mean? It means, right, so when we, we run an inventory of your business, what are the, the top three friction points in your business now? The top three friction points, they need to be removed. So we remove the friction first, then get the client and candidate side running. Two probably running in parallel. But you need to decide your role. You need to decide your role. And then we need to systemize 80% of what you're doing. So your role is key. So we decide model in project seven, then your role. Now, if you don't have this in place, what you're going to have is solo stress continually happening. Solo stress. You're going to keep working hard, and you're going to be plate spinning and going to end up in exactly the same place as you are now in a year's time. In fact, you, I don't need to tell you that, you know that. Now, if you decide your role and you've also now got the model in place, what we can start to do is we can start to replicate a campaign. So if we've got a campaign for client type A and client type B, it's your job to replicate it for A's, the B's, the C's. When I say your job, down here. The virtual talent is actually doing it, but your job is to ensure that you're checking metrics. It's your job to ensure it's being implemented. Your role changes. As Ken said many years ago, it's like going from being a recruiter to Dr. Evil looking at metrics. So it's around your role. Now, project nine, milestone the metrics. What does that mean? It means predicting the future. So what one of my frustrations with recruiters, and it's, I've had a really bad year and a bad quarter, and, okay, and I say, right, Give me your metrics for the last three years, and it's been the same, 200K every year, okay? Did you not recognize you've got a problem, that you've plateaued, and you're still working 60 hours a week? So what we want to actually do is predict the future. 
So let me give you a quick indication of this. Let's say, for example, we're, we're running a strategy, and we know that, for example, we need to get, um, if we need to get 20 placements, and each placement is 10K, that's going to equal 200K, yep? Yeah? I'm going to be really, 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 really simple here, 200K. So we'll do 200K in the next quarter, or maybe the next half year, whatever your figure is. Now, so we need, we need 20 roles. Now, let's be really negative and say that every client gives us just one role. So that means we need 20 new clients. Let's say even with inbound, you only close one out of three calls. So that 20 equals 60 calls you need to have, yep? One out of three. You need to have 60 calls. So you need to get 60 calls. Now, we know when we run through a campaign, for every um, 100 inbound we get, we get, let's say, 30 A's. 40 Bs and 30 Cs, okay? A's are, let's speak on Monday. So we know we need to get 60 calls. So we know we put 100 leads in, we get 30 A's. So what we need to then do is obviously get 60 A's. So we need to put 200 leads in. So when we get this control of our metrics, it's not a case of milestone the metrics and going, yippee, I'm gonna make a plan for the next 90 days. And guess what? Nothing changes. It's predicting the next 90 days and predicting the next 30 days and predicting the next seven days and indeed predicting what needs to happen on the Monday. That's called running a business and it's called having control and it lets you sleep at night. And if you haven't got that, you've got zero control. Or if someone says, go and build a landing page and then download an ebook, what a load of rubbish that is. You need something you can control every single day. Every single day you put them through a process. We're talking about campaigns. I need clients and candidates now. You've got zero control. And then what you've got is a treadmill. If you haven't got that, you just see how it goes. Now with that, you've got massive control. But also you've got this. You know if you put 200 leads in and you then get your 60 calls and then you close one out of three, which you shouldn't be, by the way, um, what about if you 10 x the leads going in? So you put 2,000 in. Well, that's 600. This is called milestone in the metrics, not what most recruiters do, which is, yeah, this month I'm going to do this. Or That's not predicting. That's, that's not running business. So you should be able to predict this. Now, you won't do it straight away because, for example, if you ran double R, double R with us, you've never run it before. But we've got averages across hundreds of niches now, so we know what the average is going to be. And, right, for example, double R, double R, we've got um, a process called... Um, the conversion booster, it's nine steps. Right from you identifying, I need this client to I need this candidate, to you actually getting paid, there are only nine points of failure and nine points of success. That means that we can tweak any point in that process. So you tweak it, then we know exactly what we need to improve the conversion on, or indeed what we need to scale. That's called Marstonia metrics. That's how, when some people see our, our, our case studies, they go, that sounds like bullshit. No one's gone from a quarter of a million to a million in one year. It's because we can do this. It's because... You, if you haven't got this mindset, I truly believe this, and I'm amazed recruitment is where it is. And one of my friends said to me recently, you know, you do realize what you're doing. You could go into the automotive industry and absolutely kill it in the sales industry for automotive. Yeah, I'm in recruitment now. This is my passion. But you should be able to predict this for clients and candidates. Now, imagine you do that for client type A and candidate type A. So next month, we're going to focus on the A's, next month after the B's. But then... You build your virtual team, and you've got those doing the Bs and the Cs, etc. So with that in place, you've got real power. You've got real power. Now, I'm conscious of time. As you're going through, I'm hoping you're updating your actions. You're detailing your actions. So what's made sense? Insights, actions, questions. So what's your main takeaway from that so far? Is it... I didn't re actually realize you could predict the future. I didn't actually think about it. Is it um, breaking down automation into campaigns and nurturing? Is it, shit, there actually is a model that exists in recruitment I didn't know about. Is it, wow, Andy speaks so quickly. Uh, but what, what's been your key insight? Let me know, type in the chat box. What's been your key insight, your key takeaway? Yeah, phase three, Mark. Which, which part of phase three? Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure which Tom that is, but absolutely. It's, um, it's about being focused and trying to predict. Well, guys, let's do this in conscious of time. So enough of that theory. Let's get into the real world. So your role, your role now is to, as you know, work on that business, not work, quote, in the business, okay? So let's now get this planned out. Let's get this now into a state of, of real world. 
now these guys mentioned, this is when we got together in London. So this is our, uh, for one of my events, you might see me in the middle here and you might see me down here in my red tie and looking rather dapper, not in my shorts or anything. So that's, we got together. And I, when we got together, every single one of them shared what their big win had been. And related to the laptop side of things, so this guy, he trebled his revenue in year one. So this is the phrase that Brandt used. You might find this video on our website or on YouTube. You know, he now earns while he sleeps. Now in recruitment, that's a pretty powerful thing, isn't it? So he works with the CEO level marketplace. And when he came, he was burnt out. His, you know, way, his strategy was he'd go on to, say, Chicago, get on LinkedIn, set up 10 appointments, turn up and just try and sell. What a, was a horrible strategy. But he's trebled his business in the first year. But now he's got his life back. And they say he earns while he sleeps. These guys here, all these post rides. So this is inside our mastermind group. So you can see here, um, well, you can check out for yourself. See our online training, uh, bear fruits, opt-ins, 500 this week. Just bought my wife a brand new Mercedes. Financial freedom rocks. Hit 12K LinkedIn contacts. 10x not since joining us, not one done what himself. It goes on and on. The point I'm making to you, he's not doing these things. And he works in the marketplace. Lots of people say this won't work because it's very, very high level. His average placement fee is 54K up to, in fact, um, 75K and plus. And we've got those who are also dealing with transactional like Keith. So he's going to shut down his business. So he's working six days down to two days. Best month ever from working from a beach in Vietnam. He runs Humonics. Go and check him out, .co.uk. And again, this is a post he put inside our group there. This photo was taken from wife on Ko Chang in Thailand. The interview I got from the iPad became a deal worth 20K beginning of March. He actually has his best month ever from a beach. Been in recruitment for 20, or 20 plus years. There you go. So we're talking about there. Reply rate, 50.6% that week. That means contact 100 clients, 50 are coming into him. Contract 100 candidates, 50 are coming into him using double R, double R. So powerful. Project three, we talked about authority in the client attainment system. This guy's bill has been featured, say, in Forbes magazine, Huffington Post. You check him out here. There he is. He's got his beautiful face in Las Vegas and all over the net. All expenses paid trip. Now, again, he's not doing this. He didn't write one word of the content that went out. He didn't do any of the automation that went out. It ran in the background. Brand new niche. So there's countless opportunities here, and it all comes down to having a framework. So what you see here is, is maybe what the game plan might be. So we always set up a game plan for the first 90 days, 30 days, based on your business. So it's, it's bespoke to the actual avatar of the industry we're in. Again, Stacks here, close a 45 deal today. All about inbound, guys. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but the point I'm making to you is that the, it's about the model, not the individual. So five principles. Number one, get traction, leverage the assets, map the market. So build the assets, build that database, add campaign automation. Number two, so day zero to day 60, this is where you need to get immediately up and running. Whatever you do after this, get running with your first piece of automation, get a VA running it for you. Build a 90-day plan. Day 60 to 180, this is where we're now looking to get into doing the bigger figures, doubling, doubling your revenue, where we should be looking to move towards by the middle of that year. So a systemization, whether it's a candidate generation or the client side, to you move in your role gradually from being in to on the business. Principle number four, 30-day sprints. Key thing is metrics. Remember what I said about you should be able to predict the future. That's what you should be doing. And principle number five, decide the model. You know, are you in 1.0? Are you in 2.0? Are you in 3.0? I don't know, but where are you now? The model is the, is the pivot point of change. So... Whether it's, a, it's something that's really clear to you or not, I know this. I spoke to hundreds and hundreds of recruiters every single year, and there's always search recruitment business owners who are looking to go from maybe 50K to 500K, or from 100K to 1 mil, or 500 to a mil, or from 750 to 1.5. You're the point of failure here. No one else. You are. But also you're the point of success. So it's down to making a decision. It's down to making a decision on what your next steps are. So lay out your next steps. So I've tried to condense eight years of strategies here into, well, just over 55 minutes. And you know, so everything's laid out in templates. I've tried to be really, really quick, but it's difficult to condense eight years into, 
into 55, 60 minutes. So whether it's the model you're using now, or whether it's a, a hybrid of a model, what we need to do is get you using a model that works. So what I'm going to do is switch to my iPad, and I'm going to draw out a model for you, which you might be able to relate to. Give me one second. So let me know when you can see see my, my iPad. Just give me a hell yeah in the chat box. Nice. Cool. So, thanks for that, Mark. Thanks, Rachel. So what I've seen time and time again is, in terms of your, your figures, I, let's face it, the first constraint you've probably got, most of you on the call, your first constraint is probably going to be money, revenue, or time, or time. And you're going to be in one of three phases, one of three phases. And that first phase is what we call hunt. We're in hunt. Now, even we've had businesses come to us who are doing a million dollars, and they're still in hunt. They're still in hunt. And when I break down the actual, the ownership place, you, you might say, how's that possible? So right now, you're either, you're in startup, as in you might be new to recruitment, or indeed you've got to start a business or a new business, you know, so year or less, maybe two years, maybe you're stable, maybe you've got what you call success. And most success for recruiters is I'm earning X amount but they fail to tell everyone else, but I'm absolutely dead inside. Maybe you're at a point of scale. Or maybe you're at a point of significance. The money's good, the time off is good, but you've got a next phase now, significance. Do I replicate this? So um, I've some of our senior members have now set up whole new businesses. So Keith mentioned by the end of this year, I have five businesses. So you replicate it and then replicate it across different niches. So I don't know where you are right now, but that first phase, hunt. You know, at this point, you're probably working, you're probably working full time, or indeed, you're working like a dog. You're working crazy hours. You're working crazy hours. If you're stable, if your business is stable, you may well be in build mode. And that's where we're starting to get serious. That's where we're starting to get serious. So at this point, you're probably working long hours now, or indeed now you're working you know, 100% of the time, you're barely seeing your family. This is what we normally see. And at scale, what's happening here is you're either working at overtime, so you're working way past your limit, or you're at a point now of breaking. But at this piece, this is where we want to get into free time. And that's where we get into using projects seven to nine. Seven to nine. So, at this point, we're in what I call flow, which is a really good place to be because the business is running without you. But to give you some indication of what that means money-wise, let me just change pen there. But down here, you might be doing 10K a month, maybe 15K a month. Stable, you might be doing 20, 20K a month. Success, you might be doing 30 to 40K a month. You might be doing 80K a month, 140 plus up here. So I don't know where you are on that, on that level. But what I've seen is those who are at hunt mode down here, often there's guys who are doing 50, 60K and they come to me and it's like, wow, how have you done 50, 60K a month? And they're still in hunt mode. They've also been working like a dog. It's because they haven't got the model behind them. So I don't know where you are on that, on that, on that model. I don't know where, what fits in with you. You know, we've not spoken before. But... For those of you who are probably in, in here, the next minute or two will be relevant. If you're down here, maybe not. So you need to recognize where you are, but I tell you, every time, the laptop side of your business, having that laptop business, or indeed having a seven-figure business, and you're in an office, it's down to the model. And it's down to having or not having those nine projects. Without those first three projects, this is the foundation. That's the foundation. Without that, 
you're always going to be up and down, feast and famine. You must have them in place. But once you've got them in place, the rest just absolutely is a breeze. But we do what we call um, dual tracking. So dual tracking means we want you to do the following. So most recruiters work in, uh, urgent. Every task is urgent. They're working at the top of their adrenaline every day. Every task is urgent. Now, the things that will give you the, well, the, the strategies, if you think about – oh, my pen's died. The strategies are going to give you the – the long-term growth, it's going to be the important task, the projects. Projects mean the infrastructure that works while you sleep, things that run without you. So we've got urgent tasks and we've got what we call project tasks. We actually want to do both in the first, first month to start to get the systemization in place, but also get, get paid, get the clients, get the candidates. So we want to get that happening. So wherever you are on that model, I, I don't know. But there are three drivers I've seen every time that dictate where you will be and whether it's a uh, you can make this happen or you can't. Number one, are you in a niche or at least do you get niche? Do you get the importance of niche? So if you were saying, if there's, let's say you're in a dozen niches and there's a total of a million clients and a million candidates. Yes, you can still make it work, but let's focus on one niche at a time. Let's focus on that first 30,000 and that first 10,000. Or indeed, it might be a micro niche of 300 people, 300 clients and 500 candidates. But niche is king. Because remember step one, we build the data sets. Next. Plain and simple, douchebag free zone. I personally don't work with douchebags, and you know, I set up this business to number one, um, enjoy myself and work from my laptop. And also, why do you want to spend people with douche, spend time with douchebags? You don't, I don't. I don't expect you to take douchebag clients on, or candidates, and it's um, the same for me. An action taker, say so I'd rather have someone who's got um, desire as opposed to an MBA all day long. So if you fit into the startup up to significance, and you want the six videos, so the case studies, you want the report, you want the plan, you want an audit call, you want the 50 audio sessions, absolutely cool. Just go to rmi.acuityscheduling.com, rmi.acuityscheduling.com, and this is going to happen. Schedule a 15-minute call. Um, on that call, the actions I asked you to write down earlier, so project one, action, insight, question. Those questions I'm going to help you with. If you recognize on those nine projects, and I want you to be honest with yourself, so these are nine projects, Andy. I've looked at it. Um, this project, I've, I've got zero. This project, I've got this. This project, I need to do the following. I want you to come understanding which of those projects you have got, haven't got, you've got questions around. So when I asked you to complete the questions earlier, around each project, so project, action, insight, question, I'm going to answer those head on. If you've got a bigger strategy question, I'm just going to answer that head on. But we're only going to spend 15 minutes together. Only 15 minutes, okay? On the back of that, if, um, if I believe I can help you, then we'll have a deeper session. But I urge you to come with that looking at those nine projects because that is, your, that is the success criteria to hit the financial success criteria you need. So go to rmi.acurityscheduling.com. If, when you get there, so check, choose your date, choose your time, important, choose your time zone, choose your time zone, and what you're then going to get is an email of confirmation, you're going to get sent some really cool, you're going to get the video sent straight away, you're going to get the report sent, some really, really cool stuff sent straight away. It's rmi.acurityscheduling.com, but I want you to come to that knowing niche is key. Don't be a douchebag. And be an action taker. What I don't want to do is give you my time and also take up your time. And then we, we have 15 minutes and it's like, yeah, this is, this is cool. Right, let's spend another 45 minutes together. And then I give you your plan. And that, on the strategy session, that's what we're doing. By the way, this isn't some um, under the radar sales thing. I never, ever talk about any of my programs, only if you ask me. It's, I'm, going to give you a, a, I'm going to give you your plan. Now, I haven't done this years and years and years. I know that 95% of people are going to go, wow, pff, tell me more. Or they're going to come back and say, Right, I've thought about this, so it's, um, it's just about giving. But don't come to this call if you're not an action taker, because what I don't want to do is, um, I spoke with Vandy for 45 minutes, he gave me a plan, what changed? Nothing. And then underneath it, what do you do? Oh, nothing. So only come if you get the concept of niche, you're not a douchebag, and you get action. Say, so I'd rather you come with a blank canvas and you've got desire, than you've got every qualification in recruitment and business, but you're not going to take action.
So it's rmi.acuityscheduling.com. You're going to get the six videos. And remember, I want you to actually fix a problem. So an additional thing to do before that call is this. Go to your workbook. I want you to detail. What's the number one thing that's holding you back? So Andy, I haven't, plain and simple, I haven't got clients. Or um, Andy, I, I just can't scale. I've been doing 250K now for the last four years. My specific question is, is what? How do I get Java developers in investment banking to, to what? Or how do I get clients in this niche um, in my inbox? Or so give me the number one thing that's holding you back. Give me the specific question. Then I want you to look at the projects we've been through. And at the bottom, I want you to detail, right, I think this could be fixed by project four, by campaign automation. I think maybe the actions are number one. I don't know exactly who my client is. I've, I haven't got a database, number two. And uh, number three, I haven't got any automation. I want you to come. I want you to start to get the neural pathways firing. Point is you and I talking, just shooting the breeze. Now, I've got members who've been with me for six years. Why? Because they come to me to get 200K, then 500K, then 750, then a mil, and we become close. But this first in time we speak, I want you to come, and I want you to come prepared. I want you to come serious about your business. So pull up the sheet. Now remember also, the action pages. What are the specific projects, insights, actions, and questions you've got? So we can dig deep on those. So we can dig deep on those, okay? Bring those so we know exactly what we need to be focusing on. With that, I'm going to know exactly how to help you. I'm going to know exactly how to help you. So that said, let me check the chat box. I'm conscious we've gone way over time. Um, so let me do this. First off, in the chat box, capital Q, any questions? Well, let me do this, conscious time. Um, first off, any insights in the chat box? Or give me a, a hell yeah. Questions, let's do this. I'm, we're now 18 minutes in. I'll answer your questions, get them onto your, your action page, into your mastermind sheet, and I'll get those answered, okay? But let me just go in quickly and just have a, a quick check. One second. Lots of hell yeahs, yeah. Let me just bring this up one second. Uh, inside your workbook, Mark. So the, the mastermind focuser is on is on page 20 to 21. Page 20 to 21, okay. Uh, uh, yep, a few people saying that we didn't actually go through the whole project. Yeah, you're right. We didn't complete the whole project. And it's conscious of time, guys. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, I'll take you through that when we speak, the whole, the whole nine projects and give you the, the, the full helicopter view of that. But giving you a, a conceptual view and a... Uh, Implementation view, but yeah, I'll take you through that when we speak. But you're absolutely right. Just conscious of time, just being respectful, okay? Uh, this is awesome, overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah there's lots here. Um, key thing my job's always the how, so the how is my job. My job is the how. So, you now one of the things we got, uh, if you don't know if you can see my screen, so this is, uh, the, this is the roadmap. So, this is the actual the level. Well, some of the roadmap that we go from being a startup through to being a seven-figure business. So you can see we've got phase one, we've got phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five, phase six, phase seven, phase eight, phase nine, phase ten. Okay. So these are the actual, this is the roadmap to create a seven-figure recruitment straight search business owner. I'm not going to go in too much detail. I'm going to be respectful of my members who've, um, well, they pay the membership for it. But essentially what we're talking about here, guys, is your job is to get phase one done. Is to get phase one done. So phase one is getting essentially campaigns running for clients, for candidates, and getting paid. So although there's a lot here, the reality is you only focus on phase one probably in the first 90 days and then move on from into phase two, et cetera, et cetera. But phase one, um, Keith, Keith uh, that best month ever from the beach, that's still in phase one. Uh, you know, some of the things like uh, um, you know, Brandt, for example, Brandt's doing some things now in phase Phase four, so I'm doing some more advanced stuff. So, uh, but you're not expected to go away and know all this, guys. Although there's a lot there, 
So my job's the house. The very first thing we do is create a game plan. So we ask members to complete an audit document. And with that audit document, I go and create a game plan. From the game plan, I lay out the exact steps of the first 90 days, 30 days, seven days. Um, from there, normally it's just three to five strategies we implement, which are focused on your first constraint right now is either to get clients or candidates, I imagine. So it's to focus on getting you the clients, candidates, getting paid. From there, we move into phase two, et cetera, et cetera. So although there's nine projects, the reality is you only focus project, um, one project at a time and get into implementation steps. So a lot yet there, but I don't expect you all, in fact, wouldn't even want you to even think about understanding all that <laughs> implementing. You know, this is eight years of, um, of strategy. Uh, Do you have a website designed to assist in website development for inbound automation? Uh, Tom, every single thing we do is, is laid out. So, um, for example, um, the inbound, so with RRR, the, the, the templates are actually written already. It's done for you. Um, we tested over 10,000 times our members in, sorry, our, our team in the Philippines. Then we tested it over 10,000 times of our five or in circle members. Um, when we use a, a process for a funnel, uh, the, the, the actual templates and the funnel is actually done for you already. It's a case of just copy. Uh, the... Uh, Website side of things, again, website 1.0, 2.0, it's actually done for you already. We've got templates already done. Uh, th these are already done in, in the background. So, uh, yeah, we've already got all these things done already. So, um, you know, uh, if I just bring up this, Tom. So this is... Uh, hey, so we can only show you part of that video on this platform. To watch the rest of that video, head to the Laptop Recruiter Facebook group. You'll find that video, along with numerous other videos, other artifacts, other deliverables around client automation, Candidate automation, inbound, launching, growing, scaling, a recruitment search business nowadays. Now, if you've been follow following me for a period of time, my name's Andy Whitehead. I'm from RecruitmentMarketingInternational.com. If you want help right now, there are four ways we can help you. Number one, join the Laptop Recruiter Facebook group, as I just said. Number two, watch any of these on-demand client and candidate automation, inbound and growth webinars, whether it be the Laptop Recruiter, whether it be the Million Dollar Recruiter, plus the hundreds and hundreds of other podcasts you can find on iTunes, on our website, on YouTube, etc. Number three, if you want to reach out to me personally on LinkedIn, on Facebook, often uh, you guys reach out to me, you've been following me now for eight years, now's the time. If you've got a question for me, send me a message on Facebook or on LinkedIn, I'll come back to you personally. Or number four, if you're now ready to become a client, simply schedule a call, head to our website or head to the Laptop Recruiter Facebook group and then reach out to me personally inside there and I'll give you my diary, and let's book a call. So with that said, guys, I'll see you inside the Laptop Recruiter group. Let's do this.